So once you can follow this four-step process to find an instantaneous rate of change, right? And, you know, we've been looking specifically at the point three. If we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change at t equals five, we would use, you know, five, six, and then five, five plus h. Or you could skip the whole five, six step. If I want the instantaneous rate of change at t equals five, I would just do five and five plus h, get the expression for average rate of change over five, five plus h, and then I would take a limit as h approaches zero, and then that would be the instantaneous rate of change at five. So now you can find instantaneous rate of change. You can do um, the ones that I assigned for you to do on this worksheet, not the whole thing, just three, four, six, and eight. Otherwise, you know, the whole process gets a little redundant. Um, and what else can you do? Th that finishes off this, this unit, right? Because rates of change, that's section 2.4. It's the last section in this chapter, which is our unit one. So you are able to look at a function and determine a limit. You're able to determine a limit by factoring and, and reducing. You're able to determine a limit uh, using sine x over x. You're able to justify limits using the limit for the left and the right. Justify the limit exists or the limit doesn't exist. You're able to make statements about continuity. Is the function continuous or not continuous? A certain point and you could justify those things and you can classify the points of discontinuity those are all things that we've been able to do uh, so we're ready really to wrap up this unit I think uh, on on Monday I'm gonna um, post some review materials I'm not gonna be here and then uh, I'm not gonna be available at that time and then on Wednesday I'm going to uh, sh share with you the evaluation the, the assessment it's like a take-home test or a mini project for you to do okay but I also want to do just I, I have this uh, sheet that I have um, posted on the Google Classroom and also in the handouts um, section of the website. It says tips for evaluating limits analytically. So, uh, you know, graphically, you can look at the graph. We're pretty good at that. But analytically, there's sort of different things you can do. So I wanted to sort of break down the types of limits you can do analytically and how you do them and give an example of each. So the limit of a rational function at a finite point. Example like this. Not limit as x approaches infinity, limit as x approaches 4. What are the steps? Factor, simplify, substitute. The expression remains a limit until the substitution step. Be careful how you write that limit statement because on the assessment I will grade you on that. So this equals uh, the limit as x approaches 4. I didn't actually prepare this so are you, are you sure you're gonna give me you're gonna give me 3x squared minus 5x minus 28 to just factor. Okay, let's see. I'll take a post-it here. Um, 3x squared minus 5x minus 28. So, I, all right, I know it's going to be 3x and x. Um, tw 28 can be 7 and 4. It can be 2 and 14. It can be 1 and 28, but I'm doubting that. I'm looking at the 7 and the 4. 3 is 1 and 3. 21 uh, minus 4. That's not going to work. Um, 12 what is that, 7 and 4? Yeah, 12 minus 7. Oh, 12 minus 7 is 5. So that's it. It's the 7 and the 4 and the 1 and the 3. I want the 4 to go against the 3. So 4 and then 7. So then I'll have 12 and 7. I want my result to be negative. So I want the larger, the 3x times negative 4 to be negative and then positive there. That's how I factor, just so you know, by the way. So then I'll just double check. Yeah, 3x times x, 3x squared. And we're going to negative 28. Um, plus 7 minus 12 is negative 5x. So that's it. All right. So that is equal to and all kinds of windows into my brain in this section. 3x plus 7 times x minus 4. Not always a pretty place to be. Sometimes it's fun, though, be in my brain. I, I like it. I wouldn't trade it for anybody else's brain. Well, maybe. I don't know. If you could trade, if you could trade your brain for somebody else's brain, who would you trade it for? I don't know. 7x squared minus 14x minus 56. Okay, so I know I'm going to have 7x and x and I know I'm looking for things that subtract to be 14 because of the minus here 56 I mean the obvious thing is 8 times 7 let's just start with that so I could get uh, 56 that's not gonna work and uh, 8 and 49 now that doesn't work Oh, I need more things that multiply to be 56 Oh, jeez, who gave me this problem I can do 4 times 14 right 4 and 14 so I could do uh, 28 and 14. Oh, 28 minus 14 is 14. So see how I get those? I'm just looking at things that multiply to be 56, trying to pick things that would be likely, and then finding where, where I can multiply pairs and subtract to get this number. If this is a plus, I'll look for things to add to get that number. So um, yeah, and so I figured out the 7 has to go times the 4, so I'm going to put the 4 over here, and then I'm going to put the 14 here. Yeah, and there's, some people do that like British thing. I don't, I don't like that. Anyway, that's minus, that's plus. Um, I got negative 56, I got 7x squared, I got 14 minus 28 is negative 14. That is it. I also could have used, by the way, 
there is a hint that I, that I passed up that I could have used, which is that since there's an x minus 4 in the numerator and its limit as x approaches 4, one of the factors almost had to be x minus 4. Otherwise, it'd be sort of a trick question. Okay, so this equals limit as x approaches 4. By the way, that was the factor step. Now the simplify step, still a limit, 3x plus 7 over 7x plus 14. Then I substitute. When I substitute, it is no longer a limit. So I'm going to plug in the 4. I'm going to write 4 times 3 plus 7 over 7 times 4 plus 14. So we can see that I'm evaluating. And then I'm going to figure out what that is. Um, 12 plus 7 is 19. Uh, 28 plus 14 is like 42 or something, right? 28 plus 14 is 42. Yeah, sure. It's 1940 seconds. Yep. All right, I don't know why I chose an insane example. Factors, simplify, substitute. Limit, limit, not a limit, not a limit. You get graded on all that. Okay, that's limit of a rational function. This is a rational function at a, at a finite point. Okay, limit involving sine x over x. We want to rewrite it to find sine x over x. Here I have sine x over square root of x. Has to be limit as x approaches 0. If it's like a limit as x approaches 4, then I could just do that by substituting. Right? This is the limit as x approaches 0, so uh, I want to try and rewrite that. Well, I need x in the bottom, so it's going to be limit as x approaches 0. By the way, write, watch how I write the limit statements. So what I can do is say um, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by square root x because that way I will get the, um, the square root, the x that I want, right? Square root of x times square root of x is x. All right. So then uh, I'm multiplying, I'm just multiplying top and bottom by squared x. So that's limit as x approaches zero of, and I'll go ahead and write this as sine x over x times square root x, right? Because square root x times square root of x is x, square root x is there. So this is a, just a pretty basic algebraic manipulation to there. Now look, this is the part where people who are uh, working on writing their limit statements better really watch this. When I separate the product, write the limit statement twice. Limit as x approaches 0 sine x over x times limit as x approaches 0 of square root of x. Right? So the limit of the product becomes a product of limits. Then I can evaluate. I know this limit is 1. I can do, uh, do this limit by substitution at 0. So that equals 0. Right? So it's a limit, limit. When I split it over a product, it's two limits. And then when I evaluate each limit, then it's not a limit anymore. Okay, we'll talk about, so that, this is two examples lim, of example types. I'm going to go through all these other limit example types uh, in the next video.